One of the most memorable songs in Deadly Alliance. Maybe the only one, aside from Immortal. Welcome back to another chapter of Mortal Kombat Vengeance. Last time. Kung Lao, Aiko, Nightwolf, and Raiden were making the last minute preparations before they headed to Shang Tsung's island as, they, as their rendezvous point. And Raiden assigned Fusion to recruit the distant combatants while Raiden keeps an eye on Kung Lao and Liu Kang's training with Liu Kang's soul inside of Kung Lao's host. So, with that out of the way, let's get going. And I apologize for the delay because the second part was accidentally deleted. So let's get this over with. Alright, continuation two, Repressed Memories. From here on in, the fix going to have some flashback scenes recalling the prelude before the Deadly Alliance make their move on Earthrealm and killing Liu Kang. Deadly Alliance was a very tricky story to work with, even more overwhelming than my last epic, Shinnok's Uprising. So many things transpired here, and it's difficult enough when the lore's divided between each combatant because of the bios. Luckily I found a vid explaining it, explaining it all courtesy of MK Temple, the same source of intel I used for my previous epic. However, since I had no experience with MK5, it was still quite a challenge while piercing everything together. Kung Lao still trains with Lu Soul inside him, while a special someone shall recruit their distant allies. Throughout the last few days, Raiden, Aiko, Nightwolf, and Kiba had been monitoring Kung Lao's training while sharing Liu Kang's spirit inside him. His skills were impressive, even when the former champion combined his pyrokinesis with his aerokinesis. However, Lao seemed to have missed those powerful combinations, like throwing Liu Kang after a few flips and the monk unleashing a tremendous flying kick. Also, the after-effects were what kept hindering the retired Shaolin. Little by little, Lao gradually became stronger and more mobile with Lu's astral form, and they both became bolder in stopping the Deadly Alliance by sharing their common goal pointed out by Nightwolf. Since then, Lao had Lu as his ghastly guide. The responsibilities were undoubtedly onto him now in saving all realms and avenging his partner. He knew how this was his chance to prove himself as being the Shaolin's equal. Lao one evening, late one evening, Lao's body became limp during one meditation session, something he hadn't done so in a while. If he could just ease his body and mind, then perhaps enduring Lu's intervention shouldn't be too painful. It seemed the calming waves and the gentle breeze soothed him down in conjunction with his deep rhythmic breathing. His head soon began to get weighed down, and his heart rate was steadily decreasing. He was enveloped in complete darkness and soon woke up in the same lotus position with his eyes fluttering open. The light from the bright overcast sky made him come to, yet there was no wind nor waves. He noticed it matched the colorless landscape all around him, even on the distant precipices and floating islands. This place was unfamiliar to him, and not like the island beaches, nor like the Wuxi Academy at all. Where is this place? He thought aloud, his eyes scanning the bizarre terrain. Let me have a look, Kung Lao. He was certainly glad he can still hear Liu Kang's voice within the dragon head. He relieved it from his chest pocket and the monk observed. Hmm. Just as I suspected. Where is it, Liu Kang? We seem to have merged minds. You and I with our unpleasantry sharing your body. <sighs> Rolling his eyes. I'd been through this once, and if I remember correctly, this island we're standing in represents our subconscious. You mean... This is a dream? It's more likely a surreal trial for the two of us. Do we need to reach those cliffs? 
This is how we should progress through it. I believe we are in limbo at the moment. This plane shall represent our deepest memories. Perhaps a few conflicts warring inside us. How can we resolve this? Well, we need to build a bridge somehow, and each island must have a different obstacle to overcome. A bridge? Am I supposed to envision that in my mind? Let me out of the amulet for a minute. I'll take a look. Loud suggests that as the outstretched an arm while allowing loose green spirits to be unleashed. His body looked the same except it was all outlined in the lime hue. He floated over to the plateau in which he saw depression. In it there looked to be the same training grounds as in the academy. Rows of monks were following an instructor. Though they were in unison and were learning an unusual method. Of course! They're learning how to fight in the mantis style! Mantis? I, I hadn't done this technique in so long. This form of combat was introduced by Wang Lang in the, Mai, in the Ming Dynasty, back in 1600. Yes. He mimicked a green praying mantis fighting a cicada. It was a very swift and effective technique. Spirit descended back to the island. Kung Lao. You need to remember and master each technique. The mantis fighting style is known for its quick and accurate attacks. This can help us against the deadly alliance. Strike me with your basic mantis attacks. He commanded Lao to perform the drilling punch, which was a more impaling the chest. A move impaling the chest. The double mantis strike made Lao raise his tight fists and slam them both down onto his enemy. The leg sprouting kick had Lao knee the, be the neck and outstretched the same leg, and the chest piercing kick was a direct blow toward the stomach. Lao at first fell skeptical on trying to hit a spirit, but he didn't have a he didn't have a choice to question Lu's logic nor the time. Seems it's coming back to you. He looked over the monks again and he gave his observation to his new disciple. The mantis single leg soaring kick is a pop-up hit that allows the attacker to repeatedly strike his opponent before he hits the ground. Attack me with the mantis single leg soaring kick. It was sort of like the uppercut which aimed vertically to the neck, making loose spirit get tossed and dropped to the ground. Lao did it once as a warm-up, then Lu urged him to juggle the opponent multiple times. Still, it didn't leave a blemish on the spirit. Excellent! You have done well. Now you must learn the mantis low attacks and sweeps. Use them to keep your opponent on the defensive. You must perform the seven star hit, toppling kick, ward off punch, low, thrust, low thrusting palm, and leg squatting kick. Try attacking your opponent with mantis low attacks and sweeps. The seven star hit seemed to be two fingers and one hand poking the stomach, while the other hand used all five to hit it. The toppling kick was like a side kick, making the opponent drop. The third technique was like a swift move to the sore gut, and the low thrust was just basically an open hand into the torso followed by the sweeping trip. As soon as he succeeded, a landform began to enlarge and connect to the other distant precipice. Kung Lao ran across it, and the spirit of Liu Kang followed close behind while he hovered. The training ground that the Shaolin saw was gone, yet still there was another cliff in the distance. Liu Kang simply repeated the procedure. Your next lessons will be to learn another one of your martial arts fighting styles. You do recall the Shaolin Fist, right? He nodded, his pose wasn't as basic as before, instead, one arm was raised and curled back while the other curled downward. His left leg seemed to be more forward than the right with his knee bent. Around the year 539 AD, a holy man named Tom Mo developed an exercise program for his fellow monks. The program included several Indian fighting techniques, but over time, the exercise program grew into a kung fu fighting style. Now you must learn the roundhouse strike, attack the heart, curved hook punch, back fist strike, and front kick. The slightly bent knee was raised and the foot struck through the air. 
the raised right arm aimed for Lou's heart and made a direct vertical hit. With the same curved arm, he aimed and lunged a punch to the upper chest. It was obvious as Lau used his right hand as he struck with the rear. Then he was able to grab the ghost, which made the spirit lower enough to make his mark with a direct kick. Lou backed away at Ted, but he just shook off the clenching blows. Like any structure, fighting skill is built brick by brick. You must first learn these basic Shaolin attacks before continuing further. Another landform was for forged, and they reached the next plateau. Lau picked up a very familiar weapon. He recognized it as the broadsword. He remembered training in the broadsword technique since his early teen years. Though he was a tad rusty, ironically, the blade itself was as still as shiny as ever. The broadsword is known as the arm of foot soldiers and Maturian officials. It is ca categorized as a short weapon and is designed for slashing rather than thrusting. With some fragments flashing in his mind performing all kinds of deadly techniques, Lau recalled the cross, the cross-cutting slash, twisting body strike, crushing side slash, rising slash, and half moon slash. Just like an uppercut, he sliced upward, then he sliced down, twirled as he jumped, and struck from airborne again. The side swipe was a piece of cake. The forceful ascension started from the bottom to the top, which caused the body to rise and fall, and some quick swipes in a vertical arch were performed. He also remembered some low stabs toward the torso and legs, while making a spinning strike as well. Kung Lao had also mastered the ability to impale his broadsword into an opponent to slowly drain his life force. Once lodged into an opponent, his blade cannot be removed. In a flashback, he did the same thing with Baraka twice, back in the Soul Tombs a few years back, which is a tie-in to Shaolin monks. Lao just simply wound up like a pitcher, preparing a strategic throw, and tossed in the blade making it stuck within Liu Kang's ghostly chest. At first, he was terrified, but the monk just laughed it off. Heh! <laughs> you really think that's going to hurt a spirit? I don't feel a thing! Tugged it out and threw it out for Lu to catch the handle. Lau and Lu then heard some vehement muffled voices. They seemed to grow and weaken in dis decibels. But it was just enough for Lu King to recognize. That's Master Raiden! We must go! His best friend took his hand and then a white light illuminated the plane, blinding their vision. Sure enough, it was him, and the first thing Lau noticed was firm grips on his shoulders while giving his body a shake. His sight cleared slowly, and indeed it was his mentor. Oh, Raiden wiped his eyes clean, and Lau was surprised it was already daylight. Thankfully, the landscape was in color again, with a robin egg blue sky, the gray ocean and the amber rubble with the evergreen palms. He let out a slight grin, relieved for once he was back in the realms of the living instead of being the dead plane of existence. It seems you've come, too. You were out of it for several hours, and it was hard for me to awaken you. You're lucky I didn't have to use an electro shock onto you. The god smirked. Lao just shook his head. Iko was just as relieved. Thank goodness you didn't have to. I'd seen those horrid films in a psych ward before. It's about time you have awakened. Raiden was explaining the Deadly Alliance had escaped from the Nether Realm, while betraying Moloch and Traman. Who? Isn't Moloch like a demon? Like a very skilled warlord of sorts? Moloch and Draman had also escaped into Outworld near the Living Forest. I fear the worst for those vulnerable Ceterans. Terrifying images flashed through his mind, evacuating the endangered Saurians through a portal to another world of swampy abandoned ruins, to watching Earthrealm be hit by an asteroid, which is a fallen god during the first insurrection of Shinnok. He soon regained his words. Without Liu Kang's spirit like Shang Tsung desired, their plans had been grinded to a crawl. With the demon sorcerer's mastery in necromancy, it will not take long for him and Quan Chi to establish their evil plot in Outworld. It actually has... <clears throat> 
It actually has been a decade in the nether realm, though it seems to be one year in earth realm. It didn't seem perplexing to the shaman. This statement tugged a memory in Lau's head when Jax was discussing with him deep in the found tree. Again, from Shell and Monks. How long have you been here? I do not know. Time is different in this realm. Feels like weeks. The Thunder God's words interrupted Lau's reverie. As an Elder God, I was able to observe Outworld while also maintaining my abilities. However, I could not intervene. Therefore, I sent the two sorcerers escape the portal from the Nether Realm, while also taking a vessel known as the Nether Ship in between realms. Remembering Shang's services to Khan, the palace became operational, and then, and their purpose was to house many souls. Kung Lao wondered if Shang was so desperate to become the next ruler and expand Outworld over Adenia, while another fatal Mortal Kombat tournament like the one that was ho housed here, but Raiden stated that wasn't his purpose. Instead, the duo desired to awaken the mummified members of the undead serving the ominous Dragon King, Onaga. This brutal serpent was foreign to each of the mortals. The heroes took a minute to ponder all this creepy information. Aiko then chimed in that Nightwolf should volunteer for his pet Pikiba, to detect those who are real, like a sort of soul-smelling detector. Excellent idea, Aiko! Considering he smelt Lao's disguise, which led them a token to the Deadly Alliance's ambush. This made her eyes light up, as did a distant neon shade, which brightened the onlookers' faces. They braced for the worst until their eyes made out a skinny figure in a ponytail with another. And it was Sonya and Johnny! They greeted the duo with Stikiba, who ran up to them, sniffed and licked the female special forces agent several times. He then smelt the male agent's feet, in which there was no disquietude. Hey, Wolfie, how you doing? Sonia and Johnny approached the quartet and briefly recapped the events leading up to Liu Kang's death. Both agents sympathized, though they were grateful and shocked that the heroes had a spirit talking inside the dragon head Raiden created. As if things can't get any more stranger. Not unless I am willing to possess your body. Johnny here took on as a Bollywood actor part-time, but he still stayed within the special forces. They were making an alias for him. Those bastards never believed in resurrection anyway. Right. Oh, I forgot to mention something. Sonia took out a shiny diamond ring from her breast pocket. We've been engaged! And so was Jax with his girlfriend Vera. Though the relationship's albeit distant with the OIA and all. You're engaged? Guys, that's great! Yeah, but things just went awry as we lost contact with our men. I think Jax, Cyrex, and Kenshi may be stranded in Outworld. And it all started with a betrayal. Sonya and Johnny with several officers were at the technological base. Well, same one with Cyrax in MK4. The general's frustrated on calling Jax. She always wound up with no signal after she received a mechanical interference which affected all the equipment. She suddenly received a call on her cell phone that the tenor made her notice he wasn't her partner at all. Sonya Blade here. Sonya, is that you? It's me, Stryker. <gasps> Stryker? Curtis Stryker? Yeah, it's been a while. I hadn't heard from you in years. What's up? Not too good. My best friend Cabal... He's in pretty rough shape. He's already in critical condition, as if his incinerated face wasn't bad enough. What happened? Someone stole his hook swords and ran off with them. He was only able to identify the suspect with an artificial heart. Artificial heart? Oh, that's Su Hao! Wait, you know this bastard? Yeah. Su Hao went missing for some time. We thought he'd be with Jax and Cyrax as an Outworld scout. 
He was part of the special forces? Jesus, this is heavy. Cabal also identified an encrusted mark of a red dragon on his arm. Red dragon? The red dragons! I thought they were dead like the black dragons! Rumor has it the red dragons were too cruel for a subordinate. Oh, the latter is a crime syndicate that broke off from the former organization. Rumor has it the red dragons were too cruel for its subordinates. First Kano, and now this? We weren't able to catch the suspect. I had to stick with Cabal. But if he has connections to the special forces, you best stay alert. He could be after you. I'll keep that in mind, Striker. I hope for you and Cabal to make it through this ordeal. I'll alert my squad members. Sonya out. Upon the incident of an agent turning rogue, Sonya and Johnny didn't hesitate. They were on the case as they flew to New York. Following the signal of Stryker's call from a distant hospital, they landed within the vicinity of the streets that were once occupied by the rise of Shao Kahn's fortress. This area even tugged lost memories from Sonya herself. With that sudden flashback, she suspected Sue to be close. Where is Aiko when we need her? They scanned the area for the betrayer, only to notice a whirring noise. Johnny's ears perked up and noticed a pair of twin-handled blades shaped like hooks. Hook swords? Incoming! Sonya almost instantly spotted the enemy. And it was Sue Howe, nonetheless. Sue Howe! Ugh. It didn't really have much of a voice actor. I'm doing the best I can. Long time no see, princess. She could have sworn he started to ogle her. Hey! You betrayed your own men. What the hell is wrong with you? I only allied myself with the special forces to rid of the black dragons. Virtually, you had succeeded since they died off with the likes of Kano and Jarek. It was just a favorable deed for my true allies. Mavado would be pleased. Su Hao, you were a trusted, honorable soldier. What are you doing? She was stupefied, yet Johnny countered with a shadow kick, canceling Su Hao's dash kick. Shady anti-hero went into the fray with his emerald aura abilities, including his lunch kicks and green fireballs. Su Hao kept firing a large crimson laser a lot, which was precise and also deadly. Johnny could have sworn it was capable of giving him a rush of heat. With the same gizmo pulsing, Sue let out a war cry when he sworn was similar to Shao Kahn's, and he soon noticed he became more reckless than before. He kept avoiding Sue's physical prowess, assuming his chest plate was power source. Cage seemed to almost be a glass cannon as his muscles became sore by each blow. Sue's army boots were just as merciless, especially with spikes underneath. While keeping his distance, Cage evaded his collapse, which generated a spiral of wind toward him. One gust connected, making him lose his balance. After what seemed like almost ten minutes, a skinny tornado touched down onto the former agent. This literally took him off his feet and tossed him into a nearby dumpster, in which the impact closed the lid and made it jiggle. And, well, it was Fujin. Still needs some more practice. Fusion! Long time no see. I was hoping circumstances would be less convenient with that m roach crawling around. Hadn't seen you in a while. Yes, you too. But we have no time for introductions. Your mission is about to change its trajectory. What is it? Suha wounded Cabal and betrayed my team. It gets even worse. Liu Kang. He has been slaughtered by Shang Tsung. The two could have sworn their hearts skipped a beat. That scary son of a bitch is back? Indeed. But Liu Kang is partially dead. At least for the moment. His soul was saved by my brother. Raiden was inspired by our arch enemy Shinnok. 
Thus he created a dragon amulet in case the inevitable should happen. As if it wasn't bad enough losing and resurrecting you already. To Johnny, of course. Took two years after all. Not so easy when reconstructing from a decapitation. Where is Raiden now? He, Lu, Kung Lao, Aiko, and Nightwolf are at Shang Tsung's island. I'd been assigned to recruit our distant allies there. Hold up. Wasn't that island destroyed after it sunk into the sea? After the first tournament? Not really, though there's not much left excepting a humongous pile of rubble. My brother needed to relinquish his status as an elder god while this was going on. They weren't very pleased with his sudden desertion. Yeah, even in the military, you can't relieve your line of duty unless you've been honorably discharged. In any case, I'll conjure a portal taking you there. And if my assumptions are correct, I think your narc would be working for the Deadly Alliance anyway. After 500 years, it has been reforged. Quan Chi is aiding Shang, too. That bold monster, too? This is bad. With them working together... I still need to find the other combatants. We must hurry. He conjured a portal. The beach was projecting through it. Go. Straight ahead is the rendezvous point. Our mission has dealt with a more greater threat. Run along. Well, it's all or nothing. Another mortal combat, I guess. Our friends need us, as does Master Raiden. That's more than enough couple nodded before they leapt into the portal. I hope it's not too late already. Fushin... <clears throat> Fushin may be correct, Sonya. Su Hao can just be another crony for the sorcerer's machinations. We never heard from the Outworld or Investigation Agency since I'm beginning to feel the worst for Jax, Kenshi, and Cyrax. We will approach Outworld shortly. For now, though, my brother has his hands full. Nightwolf wished he would have his equipment ready to detect oncoming rips since the shapeshifter was still at large and was willing to make another swift move disguised as another acquaintance. Kung Lao still needs to train himself housing Liu Kang's spirit. Housing it? As in possession? Can it get any worse? He still has a long way to go, faced Lao, wielding it like a sword with a twig. If we see any more rips, more warriors will follow Hanzo, Kwai, and others shall join- No. More warriors will follow. Hanzo, Kwai, and others shall join us soon. At least we still have Lu's soul. Away from Shang Tsung, unlike what he did to Art- and deja vu there, with Goro. Oh good, I'm almost done. In his native tongue, Raiden prayed for Fujin to shake a leg, even though only several hours had passed, and the sun climbed to a high noon. And there are the songs for that. Like, damn it! I tried looking for those Code Lyoko songs before, and they just vanished. What the hell? All right, for this fix, Sonya has returned, as did Fusion and Johnny, but I'm going to use her actress and her entire for Mortal Kombat Annihilation, aside from Olivia from Defenders of the Realm and Bridget from the original, I felt Sandra to be just as iconic. Didn't like the 3D render and alliance very much. I also wanted her to be engaged with Johnny, as they're only one step closer to giving birth to Cassie, as is Jack's involving Jackie. They won't have much time to settle with the Deadly Alliance around, which I'd made a brief reference to Conquest. They may soon go through a power struggle, who knows. Kung Lao's training sessions were the most difficult scenes I needed to write. I didn't like doing it, especially when referring to his own Conquest mode. There were so many moves to highlight amongst his three fighting styles. It was pure torture. Although... The scene inspired from Guardians of the Galaxy, the Telltale series, was more comforting. When Mantis merged with Peter's mind to find his broken team, 
by exploring his emotions associated with them. Hey, since Luke kept merging with Lao, and since their minds most must work in sync, why not? I can agree with one of the creators, John Vogel, who really despises Su Hao despite him being a popular choice for Alliance. I don't blame you, as he became a scrappy later on. Never found the Red Dragons to begin with, not the Black Dragons like Ian and 616 Entertainment, but utilizing his artificial heart was fascinating. So, Fushin is still on the hunt for more allies. Will he succeed? And would the team be recruited in time? Well, find out later. Until then, this is the Ekron Rider signing out. Ciao.